interrupt your dull life to bring you something bewildering. Facing you is a door. It is a peculiar, yet attractive door. You open this door with the key of imagination. Within this door exists another world. A world made up of horror, fantasy, and adventure. A world surpassing everything you can comprehend and everything you cannot. A world exceeding the seen and the unseen. To those with the courage to step through the door, I would like to welcome you to the Geek Zone. Welcome home. Halloween, everyone, and welcome to the Geek Zone. I'm your host, Justin T. Sutherland. Halloween, a shortening of All Hallows' Eve, also known as Halloweenin, is a yearly holiday observed around the world on October 31st, the night before All Saints' Day. Scholars are still in disagreement as to the origin of Halloween, as some believe it started as a pagan holiday worshipping the dead, and others believe it simply to be a festival held during the fall celebrating the harvest. Even though there appears to be more evidence pointing to the later, the debate looks like it's not ending anytime soon. Typical festive Halloween activities include trick-or-treating, also known as guising, attending costume parties, carving jack-o'-lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, visiting haunted attractions, playing pranks, telling scary stories, and watching horror films, as well as the religious observance of church services or church carnivals. So this year for Halloween, I thought about doing something relevant to the holiday, but then I thought, why start now? So today we look at Oklahoma State Checkers. Oklahoma State Checkers is an NCAA licensed board game made by the company Big League Promotions Corp. This particular version is the classic rivalry edition. In case you are unfamiliar with college football in Oklahoma, Oklahoma State University, aka OSU, and Oklahoma University, aka OU, has the second biggest rivalry in the region known as the Bedlam Rivalry. The first in the region is the Red River Rivalry between OU and the University of Texas. Though this is argued amongst most people that live here saying that Bedlam is the biggest. Personally, I think it depends on the year. The board game contains two sides, like the original game with black and red tokens, but instead there is OSU helmets and OU helmets. On eBay, they go for about 25 to 30 US dollars. Normally, I would say how much this is in other countries' currencies, but the odds that the UK, Japan, or Mexico would be interested in this is remote at best. So, I'm not going to. But Googling the information is easy. No more information here, so let's dive into this college football awesomeness and see how this thing plays. Go Pokes! The flow of game is strongly dependent on the skill level of the players involved. On average, I find that turns take around 5 to 15 seconds. So flow of game gets a 5 out of 5. Game time is also a high ranker, as an average game can take you about 5 to 10 minutes. Like flow of game, this is strongly dependent on the skill level of those involved, as two people who are more equally matched will take longer to defeat the other. Because of the quick game, game time gets a 5 out of 5. The graphics in this game are... good. Not great, not bad, just good. The field has the O-State logo, the helmets look okay, and overall is just... Man, I think it would have left more of an impression if the board looked more like a football field. But, nevertheless, graphics get a 3.8 out of 5. The pickup and play factor is higher than that turtle someone put on a balloon once. The reason for this being is that the rules are checkers. There is no difference whatsoever. The only thing is, they try to change the terminology, which fails. And instead of stacking tokens to signify kingship, you put a face mask on the helmet. It is insanely simple to learn, thus pick up and play factor gets a 5 out of 5. What a play factor is decent. Not super outstanding awesome, but okay. Let me do another analogy. If bad is no country for old men, and great is Robocop, then what a play factor would fall on... the gray. I love to play checkers, but when I'm in the mood for checkers, I think I like this version better than the traditional. So what a play factor gets a 4.4 out of 5. Now let's tally up the score. Flow of game, 5 out of 5, A double plus. Game time, 5 out of 5, A double plus. Graphics, 3.8 out of 5, C plus. Pick up and play factor, 5 out of 5, A double plus. Want to play factor, 4.4 out of 5, B plus. Total, 23.2 out of 25 giving Oklahoma State Checkers a 92%. Congrats, Oklahoma State Checkers. You get a grade of A-. 
Tracy to kids, Tracy to kids, come in kids, come in kids, it's here at last, the new Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio that keeps you in constant touch with your buddies. Easy to work, up antenna, switch on, press talk button, and you broadcast from room to room, and even house to house. No wires needed, yet voices travel back and forth. Radio on the open road from one bike to another, or when out hiking. Dad, Dad, I found a bear's cave. Be right down, son. The powerful, fully transistorized Dick Tracy two-way wrist radio is a real electronic instrument. Make sure all the fellows get their A-OK -okay Dick Tracy wrist radio so they can keep in touch. Over and out. The one and only Dick Tracy wrist radio, wherever American toys are sold. Now, would I recommend this? Well, the only reason I would recommend this is if you are a fan of OSU and Checkers. There are other college rivalry versions out there, so if you are a fan of Checkers and of a particular college team, then I would say, yes, I would recommend it. However, if you aren't a fan of college football, then this won't be any more appealing to you than normal Checkers. So, you decide. Well, that does it for this episode. If you'll excuse me, I have to go find my father who's been kidnapped by a mad scientist while trying to keep my identity as an android a secret. So, later. We now return to the normal broadcasting. I am the captain of the Starship Enterprise. Captain Kirk, this is Spock. Please step on the transporter. Dilithium crystals hit by Klingon missiles. No! I'm a doctor. Not an actor. Not a milkman. What does that mean? And I'm sorry, he's dead Jim. Botan torpedo! <laughs> Lieutenant Uhura, open hailing frequencies. Yes, Captain Kirk, opening hailing frequencies, sir. Let's boldly go where no one's gone before. <laughs> Beam me up, Mr. Scott. Sulu, go to warp. Warp 3, sir. No, that will be way too slow. Warp 4, sir. That still is way too slow. Warp 5, sir. It still is too damn slow. Warp 6. It's too damn slow. Warp 7. It's still damn slow. It's too damn slow! No, 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 no. Mr. Chekhov, Mr. Chekhov. I am firing torpedo. That will not work and would be illogical to me. To me, to me.